What is it, boo boo? What is it, boo boo? Well, you can't see it. Okay. Well, you can't see it. <laughs> my little frame is my mom's puppy is like right here. Now she's all frisky and wants to play. Hello. It has been a long time since I have sat in front of my actual camera and not just my phone and did like a sit down video where I just talk about, you know, what's happened lately, like writing wise and whatnot. So I figured I would sit down and do a little bit of a summer writing update because quite a few things have happened. Um, I did vlog a lot of my writing in the spring um, into the beginning of summer. Those videos are up from Singapore and Japan. Um, if you haven't checked those out, please do go ahead. I can bark too. <laughs> um, I do feel quite out of practice with sitting in front of a camera, so forgive me while I gather my thoughts. And also, I hope the lighting is okay. So, where to begin? As you may know, I have been working on my project Stormcloud, my young adult fantasy novel, and I spent November 28th to May 28th, so exactly six months, writing this draft, what was termed draft 13. An unlucky number, but it actually was very lucky for me because it was the first draft that I had finished of this story in four years. I had had a lot of false starts where I start working on a draft and I lose steam and then by the time I come back to it a few months later, I've reconceptualized the plot and the story that I have there, the manuscript that I had been working on is no longer gonna work. Um, so then I have to like start from scratch basically and I did that a lot around the pandemic time. <laughs> so let's start with the spring. So in March, in April, and May, me and my husband, we spent two months in Asia. So we were in Singapore and we were in Japan. We loved our time in Japan. And one of the wonderful things about Japan was that I got to visit the place where my story, Stormcloud, takes place. At least part of the story takes place in Yakushima, Japan. Ow. I fed you, I walked you, I played with you. We were just outside for like over an hour. Just when I was getting into a group, and now I've lost my train of thought. Oh, um, I'm so proud of the time that we spent there. It was only four days, but it was so magical. It was so enriching. It was so nourishing to my soul. Yeah, from that, I got a lot of notes, a lot of notes, a lot of things that I learned about Yakushima that I can incorporate into my story. So I finished Stormcloud knowing that I was going to have to go back and incorporate some of these notes because my perception of Yakushima and what I had found online differed a bit in some ways to what it was actually like in person. That too is just sniffing <laughs> around me. I'm sorry I keep like mentioning her and then like you can't even see her. She won't let me pick her up right now. She tries to bite me because she wants to play if I try to pick her up. Um, so I'll try to give you a little sneak preview of her at some point in the video. Don't even start growling at me, Missy. She's so sassy and so demanding of your attention. Yeah, so I knew full well that as I was finishing the story, I was going to go, have to go back and do some revisions to the parts of the story that take place in Yakushima because I just learned some things that change what I have in the story. But I feel like for the most part, it was mainly that I just learned so many cool things that would be awesome to incorporate into this story. Like I would be doing a disservice to not mention some of the things that I learned. And so I have to go back and see if I can incorporate some of these things without like changing my story too much. Once we came home from that trip, I spent about a week finishing my draft and I have a vlog of that as well. It was such a proud achievement for me. I had some thoughts about Stormcloud as I was finishing the story and when I finished the story and we'll see how these thoughts pan out. Basically, I had been envisioning this as like a four book series, but the longer I spent in with this story, I was feeling like maybe Reese's story should just be a standalone story. Not that her entire story fits into one book, but I was thinking as I came to the end of it and as I was looking at things that I had to fix in another revision of the story, I was thinking like maybe I should just try to wrap up as much of this plot as I can, give as much closure as I could and just see if this works as a standalone. Maybe not forever, but for now, you know? I don't know if it's just because I was getting burned out from Stormcloud as I was like writing this draft for six months <laughs> without looking at any other story. Because I just was feeling ready to move on from this world and I've always wanted to just do racist story justice. I wanted to honor her and to make sure that her story gets told and to do it in the best way that I can and I want to make sure that... And in, and in finishing this draft, like I know there's things I have to fix, but in finishing this draft, it was the first time in my entire life and in my entire nearly 14 years working on this story that I felt ready to actually be done with it and actually move on from it. Like I've always kind of just been like 
I felt like I should move on from it because I had been working on it so long, but not because the story actually felt ready to be done in my heart. And that's kind of what I've been feeling with this story. So it's like, it's almost like graduating like, and going on to like the next phase of life. It's closing a chapter and being open for the next one. And so I feel mixed about this. Now looking back, it's, it's now August. Um, and so looking back on how I felt you know, three months ago. I, I do feel a little bit mixed on this, but I also just don't know for sure what's gonna, what the future is going to bring with this story. I feel like that's something I can only know once I go back into the revision, which I'm not quite ready to do right now. So I think that what I will do is just try to wrap up and give as much closure to the story as I can, and then maybe inevitably some threads will be left open and then in the future if I feel ready to come back to this world I can add to the story but that I just that it doesn't have to be something I do right now like maybe her story is not part of a series of books you know maybe there's just like companion stories in this world and that's a good segue actually into the next point that I want to talk about which is Project Whisper. So Project Whisper if you watched my um, Ireland and UK vlogs from last fall, 2022. You'll note that I was working on Project Whisper or Dark Storm Cloud, as I also called it, same story. Um, it's another story within the world of Storm Cloud. Same world, different time period, different cast of characters. Just a random kind of idea that I'm throwing out there that I might or might not do is instead of having like racist books like multiple books from racist perspective and with her story maybe just doing racist story and then doing project whisper story which is a standalone and then maybe doing a series of companion novels i don't know i don't want to tie myself to that either i will say that i am excited to get back to project whisper i haven't really worked on it since the fall of last year since i put it down for camp nanowrimo once I finished writing Stormcloud at the end of May, I had been intending for June to be a month that I just had fun with writing because I had just spent six months working on the same novel. I wanted to like have the chance to revisit my other projects and have the chance to just have a bit of fun with writing. So <laughs> June was actually kind of a chaotic month because of that. So I did work on Project Whisper in terms of rereading it and I renamed my main character I had said at first that it was Race's sister, that I had just kind of snatched her from Race's story and put her in this world completely unrelated to Race. Just I liked her character and the struggles that she went through and the thing that she was dealing with. And I wanted to see what that was like in the world of Dark Storm Cloud. I decided to change her name and to change some things about her so that it wasn't actually Race's sister anymore. So Race can have her sister back, probably. <laughs> but before I even got to Project Whisper, I started out by rereading Pitchfork and my intention wasn't to revise it or to really change it, it was just to reread it and see what that was like. Just I really wanted to read it so I did that and that was a lot of fun. I was making minor tweaks but it was like grammar stuff or you know rewriting a sentence or something but it wasn't anything remotely major. I had a few embedded comments throughout the draft and I went through and I read them and I was like oh I've already fixed this or this is not something I'm going to even try to do anymore. Some ideas that I've chosen to disregard because I'm not at a point where I even want to change this book anymore. Um, I am very happy with where it is, but after I read it, after I finished reading it, I was like, well, this book is like the most whipped into shape book that I have. You know, it's complete. I have worked out the many of the major issues. And I know I should probably do some kind of beta reading thing, but full disclosure, I've never done the beta reading process. I don't have any critique partners or anything like that. And so I just don't, it's not a process that I really know what to do with. So I kind of just, and I know this is maybe not, not something I would recommend, but it's something I do anyway and have done anyway, um, is just go straight into querying. Like, I know that there are some things that could be worked out in the book, and I'm probably like burning some bridges by sending a not perfected manuscript to agents. But, um, one, I'm stubborn. Two, the idea of critique partners in beta reading is daunting, and I just honestly don't know how to deal with it. So, I just kind of go straight into trying to look for an agent. I took out my old query letter, which I'm actually very proud of, and I tweaked it a bit. And 
I tweaked my synopsis as well and I picked out six agents who I thought would be good fits and I queried them and five of them got back to me with rejections. <laughs> no surprise there. And one of them I just never heard back from, but I'm assuming that's a rejection as well. So the querying process, even though this, it wasn't a surprise that I got all those rejections, it still kind of got me down about this story in particular. I feel like with any of my other stories, it might have just been like, it might have just rolled off my back like no problem. But I think one of the things that I'm, I guess, self-conscious about with Pitchfork is that while I am very proud of it, and I think it is so much fun <laughs> and funny and just weird. Sometimes I worry that it's like too weird. I just kind of feel like it's never going to be at a standard that's worthy of something like publishing because I feel like it's very niche. I feel like it's very silly. Potentially it's campy, um, but it's definitely, like it just leans into the weird you know, in, some time, in ways that some people might find a little off-putting. Yeah, I just feel like it's not trendy enough for an agent to look at that and be like, that fits the current market, or that, that's the future of publishing, you know, like nothing like that. You know, they're gonna look at it and be like, you know, this is, this is very interesting, Sydney, and I think you should keep pursuing this story, but I'm not the right fit for it, you know. With that said, even though the rejections kind of got me down about this story, you know, I've been working to kind of put a positive spin on it. Like, yeah, it's silly, it's weird. Let it be weird, let it be who it is, you know? Maybe this story is only meant to be for me. Thriller mystery author, Peter Swanson, he had written like four novels before he published his fifth one. And for me, like I've always stuck with my early novels, like Stormcloud and Pitchfork at least, are some of my earliest story ideas. You know, while a lot of authors might have just abandoned those projects, I always kind of felt like I needed to stick with them and I wanted to stick with them because I saw so much potential in them to grow and they have grown and changed with me. So maybe Pitchfork is just the book that I write before I'm able to publish another book in the future, you know? I think at this point, just not gonna push it. You know, I'm not even going to try to change it to make it fit what publishers and agents might want. I'm just not gonna do that, and I think that's okay. And, cause I'm, again, I'm happy with the way the story is, I don't think it's worth changing for that. Especially because I have other stories. You know, I have Stormcloud, I have Hotel Story, and I even have Project Whisper. Like, who knows where that's going to go? That's still very early on in the process of writing it, so. Like, I haven't even had that story idea for a full year yet. <laughs> so after I finished reading Pitchfork, and after I sent out those query letters, I actually, started to go into book two, like planning that and figuring that out. I only spent a few days on this and I think I did my index cards. So I wrote different, I came up with a bunch of different plot points. Book two is different from book one with Pitchfork because while Pitchfork has like a, this needs to happen in order for this to happen. So it's like, a, it's got a like defined series of events. Right now for book two of Pitchfork, I have no like conception of like what order the events need to have. Like there's an overarching plot, but it's just sort of like I've always kind of envisioned like just a bunch of random fun things happening throughout the story with the characters, like obviously developing the plot, but like just having fun, like just kind of throwing things at a wall and seeing like what sticks. So it's definitely going to be a fun book to maybe discover right a bit um, whenever I get to it. So I did like, I came up with a bunch of scenes that could go in the book. I wrote them out on index cards because I really needed to do that just to play with the order. And I think I even opened up the manuscript and maybe wrote like the first like 100 or 200 words before like realizing I wasn't quite in the mindset to write this right now. I was intending it to be my camp NaNoWriMo project for July, but because I lost steam on it after a few days and just sort of felt lost with it, I put it down. And so after I put that down, I think that's when I picked up Project Whisper and read through that and like changed my main character's name and just started looking at the plot a little bit. Um, I think I even did index cards for that story. I only did that for a few days before we're at the end of June <laughs> and I, like again, this was a month I was just gonna have fun with writing and see where it took me. So I kind of jumped between all my projects and then ultimately like the last couple of days of June landed on Hotel Story. And that is where have been spending all of my time since. Like it's now August, I've been looking at hotel stories since the end of June. 
So it's been well over a month at this point. Instead of doing a read through of Hotel Story, I just started looking at my notes and decided to just jump right in. So then I decided, at the last minute in June, decided to make Hotel Story my Camp Panorama project. So I registered it, I set a goal for like 15,000 words, and steadily chugged away at this novel throughout the month of July. I went to different cafes. I was riding around my in-laws house where we live. We were supposed to go to New Zealand in July. We were gonna do a house sit, uh, two dogs and a cat in New Zealand, and it was gonna be fantastic. But for family reasons, we ended up having to cancel this trip, which we were actually kind of fine to do because we were a little stressed. There was a lot happening in June. Outside of me like doing all this like writing and stuff and reading like there was a lot happening in my family and stuff And also just like personal life in June that made it kind of stressful To have just come back from Japan at the end of May and then spend June between my mom's house and my husband's parents house and Then also preparing to be to go away again to the other side of the world for a month <laughs> Like June would have been very stressful if we were still going to go to New Zealand So we ended up canceling that trip so when I opened up Hotel Story at the end of June, I had 59,143 words. That had taken me up right before the climax. And I had gone back to start adding in this plot line for my character and I had written a couple of scenes from her perspective already. So I was just picking up that thread and continuing it on. And as I was doing that, I kept figuring out other scenes that needed to be added, whether they were from her plot line or not, just to beef up the story and bulk it out a bit and make things make more sense and set things up a bit better for later but also adding in entirely new threads to the story and so throughout the month month of july camp Ninorimo, i wrote a total of 22,382 words <laughs> 22,000 words i think if i remember correctly that that is the most amount of words i have ever written for this story in one month yeah that is the most words i've ever written in a month by almost twice as much. It's the kind of story that I've just been like inching away at. Yeah, I wrote 22,382 words this month. My best writing day was, let's see, Wednesday, July 12th, where I wrote 3,443 words. And that was the day where I had finally caught up with her plot line that I had added in to where I had left off just before the climax. And then literally the next day, I realized that there were more scenes I needed to go back and add. So I had to, I just, the entire month of July, I kept going back and re catching up to where I was, going back, adding more scenes and catching up to where I was. And so it's funny, I ended the month basically exactly where I started, like still in the same scene. <laughs> but the story is like 20,000 words thicker. So now my current word count is 81,818 words. So 81818. The last time I wrote was August 1st. And at that point, again, in the scenes before the climax of the story, this is where I'm writing now, I realized that there were too many unanswered questions in this story. And I mean unanswered for me. Like obviously the reader still has unanswered questions, but me as the writer, there were some things that I just didn't know. Crucial, foundational questions to the story that I just did not have answers to, which was fine up until this point because I had, this story has been discovery writing the entire way through so that's been a lot of fun but in doing that I kind of would like set up a question set up a mystery drop a clue and not really know the significance of it or the answer to it and so but it was always just something like oh I'll figure that out later on well now it's later on and I actually do need to figure out what some of these things mean because otherwise I don't know how to write the rest of the story um, some of these scenes just need answers in those scenes and so I had to stop writing because <laughs> I was just too confused about what to, where to go next and I actually around this time also started exploring the note-taking app Notion. I use OneNote, Microsoft OneNote as my story bible so all the information about the stories is there but any kind of like on-the-go notes um, or lists or whatever is what I've been using Evernote for. But then there was something with Evernote where I guess the company had just been sold to like some other company and I saw a couple of article headings that was like, if you haven't switched, taken all your stuff out of Evernote and put it somewhere else, you ought to. And I don't know anything about what that means, but I decided to try Notion, which I had been hearing about for a while. But the thing about Notion is while it's very customizable, it is such a huge learning curve to figure out how the app works and how to set up your notes in the way that works for you. So I've been dealing with that as I've been 
trying to answer some of these questions for Hotel Story. But I managed to create a page, and I'm going to open that now, called Frequently Pondered Questions. And so these are all, I just listed all the questions from Hotel Story that like I needed to figure out the answers to. Um, and at first I just made the, listed them as like a numbered list of questions, but then as I started like answering some of the questions, it became very confusing to look at because it was just all these huge, like boring blocks of text. So I figured out how to go in there and add some color, add some like drop down toggle list. So you click on the question and then the answer drops down. And if you don't, and if you want to hide the question, it goes back up. It's really cool. I'm very proud of it. So at this point, there are two questions left that I still need answers to. But that's like small potatoes. I have answered, oh yeah, I have answered almost all of the big questions. So that's what I had spent the last like week or so doing. Something else that I did. In, in order to answer one of the questions, I had to fix my family tree. So this hotel story deals with a family that lives in this hotel. Um, and so I needed to just make a family tree to figure out, like I already knew how everyone was related to each other, but through answering some of the questions, I realized that I actually had to change the relations between some of the characters. And so I'm just from a distance gonna show you the family tree because I think it's pretty cool. It's very complicated, there's a lot of people on it. It's like, I think it said there was like 39 people on it. Not all of these people are characters in the story. Some of these people are part of the older timelines and some of these people are just mentioned but don't actually appear in the story. And some of these people may not be mentioned or may not appear in the story, but it was just interesting for me to know who this person was. And also the years that people were born and died as well. So you can kind of see, I had to fold it down because the top of it says the name of the family. But like, yeah, there's this website called familyecho.com. So I'll link that down below if you're interested in creating a family tree, either for your story and your characters, or maybe for your own personal family. It's a nice customizable family tree. And so I really liked it. I also had to do some research on some legal stuff. So there's some legal stuff that happens in the story and the story takes place in a different country. <laughs> so I had to do some legal stuff in terms of how things work in that different country. And my father-in-law um, is a retired lawyer. And so I was able to ask him some questions. And I also emailed a lawyer um, that specializes in the type of law that I had to look up, that I had to research in this other country, but they haven't gotten back to me. And I don't think that they will. <laughs> because <laughs> um, I said in the question that I emailed them like this is not for a case it's just something that I've been researching and I can't find out they haven't gotten back to me so I might email another lawyer because I'd like to talk to somebody who's actually an expert in this instead of just trusting Google because sometimes I don't understand the information because it's very technical complicated and sometimes it's just like I can't find the information yeah, and one of my biggest, proudest achievements, okay, and not, again, to spoil anything. A character dies, like, in the very beginning of the story, and for the entire time, I hadn't figured out how or why they died, and so I finally figured that out. I know, I know all the five W's, the who, what, when, where, why, how <laughs> of it, and I'm very proud of that. And I also realized some very, like, deep, old, unresolved wounds for some of my characters. Um, that goes back into their past and like why they are the way they are and why they've made certain decisions And I'm very proud about that because it gave me so much insight into who they are and like what needs to happen to them Like there's this whole thing about characters with what they want versus what they need They start out with the goal and then at, by the end of it They've achieved either their goal or they've achieved something and that might be the thing that they need and the thing that they want Isn't always what they need, you know And so I figured out that and it has made my character so much more enriched. I was sort of writing them and this, thinking this one thing about them, but then I realized, oh my gosh, there's so much more to this than I was initially thinking. So they, it's definitely like fleshed them out a lot more. Also in the interim of July, I did a lot of reading of audiobooks. I have the Libby app from my library. So I listened to five audiobooks in the month of July. Um, the Truly Devious Trilogy, so Truly Devious, The Vanishing Stair, and The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. This series is so much fun. <laughs> I love it so much. I initially started reading the paperback of the first book, and I just was like not super invested in it, like the first 20 or 30 pages of it. But then, so then I was like, when this happens, I look, look and see if my library has the audiobook, because sometimes it's just like reading it is just not doing it for me, and I need to listen to it. And at first I was like, the audio narrator's voice is kind of weird. But then like after like a chapter, it just, everything suddenly clicked. 
the characters came to life. They were so funny and so weird and so whimsy, whimsical. Um, so I just, it's this story, this trilogy is so much fun and it's a mystery and it's similar to Hotel Story in that there is a mystery in the present and a mystery in the past and that there's these two concurrent timelines going on. And so I thought that was cool because that gave me some, not inspiration so much, well, I guess inspiration, just like a boost of motivation to keep going with my story. I also read, I also listened to Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This book was interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was um, very slow burn. It was so slow listening to it that I was like, does anything actually happen in this story? So I had to look at, some of the Goodreads reviews and one of them said something like yeah it, nothing like it's a very slow burn and then finally in the last like quarter of the book stuff actually starts to happen and even when I got to the last quarter of the book yeah stuff was happening but it was still happening very slowly and there was a lot of kind of uh gory body horror type descriptions of things not like a lot but a, a decent amount um, and most of the time throughout the story it was just like a line here a line there describing something like festering or whatever and then there was one scene like further on in the book that was just went on and on and on about it and I was like this is too much so I had to step away from the audiobook for a few days I eventually came back to it so I could finish it um, and it was the story was okay you know it was just a little slow for me um, and a little a little too gory in the horror for me and then the last book was the Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. I had been wanting to read one of her books for a while. It deals with this this girl. She, this is after her mother died, so she's sort of like, she's like this uh, fortune teller, palm reader, psychic type person on the pier somewhere in London or Brighton or wherever she lives. And then she gets a letter in the mail that she's part of this inheritance of this like old house and this old lady that she doesn't actually know. And so the story is just about that. And that was really fun to read and yeah so those are the five books that i read i started reading the bandit queens by perini shroff i am only six percent into this book my mom got a brit box free trial subscription and so i was able to delve back into my love for father brown <laughs> i love that show it takes place in this quaint town in the cult walls and it's, he's, he's a priest who solves mysteries um, and it's just such a, an endearing and charming show. I watched it in college and then for whatever reason Netflix got rid of it and so I've never been able to watch like season eight or later. But anyway, I've been able to do that. I'm doing that now. And yeah, I'm just, that's what I've been doing instead of listening to audiobooks. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> so what are the next steps with writing? So immediately next steps are to get back into writing hotel story because I kind of really okay I was actually thinking that I could finish writing the book during Camp NaNoWriMo but as I got to the end of July I realized that wasn't going to happen because I was still going back and writing new scenes but I'm still hoping to finish this book though but I'm giving myself now until the end of September but I'm really hoping I don't take that long to finish it like I said I'm 80,000 words in I am now still before the climax, but for the first time with this story, I have actually been able to envision the way the story ends. And so I'm excited to get to that point, but also intimidated. <laughs> you understand. But I do need to just sit back down with this story and get back into it. I'm allowing myself this break now because I realized at the beginning of August that I had been dealing with this story for over a month. and. That was around the time that I got that I hit a wall and needed to go back and answer some of these questions. And so I took a break from making myself write to, to deal with answering some of these questions. And that's been really fun and really useful. But now I have to either go back into writing Hotel Story or maybe I just take an extended break and fill the creative well a little bit. Um, so, you know, watching Father Brown, watching Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to bake today. I said I was going to do that. I'm... Oh, maybe I'll do that next. That'll help fill the creative well. While I watch Father Brown, I can need a, I can need some dough, and I can make some award-winning strawberry scones. No, that's a Father Brown joke. No, just just dinner rolls. <laughs> that's the immediate future. So, like I said, I'm hoping to finish writing Storm, uh, Storm, uh, finish writing Hotel Story by the end of September, and then I want to take a break from writing for like the first half of October. Um, because I've got something going on in the second half of October into NaNoWriMo 
that I want to have some motivation to write for. So I want to take a break in October, the beginning of October, so that way I can use that time to fill the creative well and then hopefully be able to hit the ground running a bit better come NaNoWriMo. Obviously NaNoWriMo is still a few months away, but it's closer than I realized. So I feel like once we get through August, we kind of turn a corner and I can actually see the fall. Right now the fall feels so far away, but it's actually next month. But I think that that's all that I have to say today. I have been talking to the camera for 56 minutes, no, 54 minutes. So this is gonna be a treat to edit. <laughs> I'm gonna go put poor Satu out of her misery. She needs some entertainment and bake some bread. Satu, boo boo. Come here, boo boo. I promised you I'd let you see her. So, come here, boo boo. Oh, so cute. Come here, Snookums. Oh my gosh. This is her. If you haven't already seen her in one of my other videos, this is her. Look at her. Say hi, Satu. Oh my gosh. Okay. There you go. Go back to what you were doing if you'd like. Or you can stay here with me. You can stay here with me. <laughs> you want to do my outro with me? <laughs> Come here, boo-boo. Come here. All right. Sorry if it's a little dark now, but thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that your writing projects are going well, and that you're having, <laughs> my head is cut off, and that you're having a wonderful summer or winter or whatever season you're experiencing where you are. I can't get this camera angle together. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.